Good evening, Brooks. Good evening, Yitka. How are you? I'm well. And people know me as Alexandra also. I have two names, so... Uh, people know I, me. I have lots of names, but most of them I don't want to be called by, so... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm speaking with Brooks Agnew. Brooks is a writer. He's uh, the author of many books, and we are going to talk about, especially about his latest book about uh, the criminal Clinton syndicate. But uh, I would like you, if you could introduce yourself a little bit. I know that you are also a radio talk show host. You have worked for military, you have education, you, your de university degree is in chemistry, as I understand, but you have studied other topics and you have patents um, uh, on several things. So you are also inventor. And uh, yes, so yes I, I've been in industry for uh, a long time, about uh, four and a half decades. And in that capacity, of course, I, I worked for a long time, went to school and then worked for a, a longer time and then went to school again. And uh, I have degrees in uh, chemistry and biology and I have a master's degree in statistics. Uh, so my in my real job, my day job, the one that actually pays me a paycheck, I work for many of the Fortune 500 companies to help them become more efficient and recover profits from variations in their processes so that's what i it's it sounds very exciting it's not <laughs> uh, but i also have uh, several patents and also in uh, electric vehicles so mm -hmm. a little bit of energy a little bit of uh, uh chemistry it's just uh, whatever interests me, I, I go after pretty intensely. This new book, Charma Favor, is my 10th book. It is my uh, seventh bestseller. It is now, I think, currently at number five on Amazon. It was at number four. Uh, so it's, it's done rather well its first week out. Uh, I hope to do a little bit better with it and a little bit longer with it because it is a very timely story. Yeah, could you show the book also? Yeah, sure. I, you're lucky because <laughs> I just got my shipment in. So uh, this is these are ones that are getting autographed. They're being sent out to uh, fans who pre-ordered the book back in January before uh, in December before it was uh, written actually before it was finished. So it's uh, it's 423 pages. It's quite uh, a pretty thick book, all single spaced, and it is a true story. Uh, with my fictional characters added in. So they kind of take you by the hand and, and carry you through the story and you learn to love them or dislike them or whatever, but uh, you, you'll have a personal experience with history. And it's not all bad. It does have a good ending. I'm not going to give it away, but it does have a good ending. It's not all doom and gloom. There is a way out of this mess, I assure you. Yeah, it's good that you give people hope also that it's not only dark. <laughs> well, there are so many people out there that um, have made a name for themselves uh, by, by selling doom and gloom. And there's plenty of that for sure, because there are bad people out there. But there are also good people. There are people who, who want to do good, who want others to do well and the two forces are at war right now and it is not all doom and gloom some of it is very bright and it's very good and if you've read the scriptures you'll know this already we win in the end we win so it does have a good ending yeah and the book is about the clinton syndicate and you describe that uh, um, Bill Clinton, that he was predestined to be the president long time before? There are, there are individuals throughout history that seem to have been created. They seem to have been expected in advance. And then conditions are created just for them. They're given a genealogy. They're given a name. They're given powers and gifts and blessings that ordinary human beings do not get. Uh, that's why the book is called Charm of Favor, because these people 
uh, uh, this couple and the, the hundreds of people that surround them seem to do whatever they want, the most horrible crimes you can imagine, but they never get arrested. They never go to jail. They smile and they look at the cameras and they last year after year after year after year. And it, it really breaks the spirit of good people who see bad people get away with it their entire lives. I mean, even Al Capone, who was a notorious bank robber, murderer, uh, bootlegger, uh, he was a violent, vile man. They could not catch him. They could not beat him because he killed all his witnesses. He intimidated them. He bought off judges. He bought off police. He was a master at it. And they never did catch him. It was the IRS that caught him for income tax evasion, a small technicality, and he died in prison. That was not the kind of justice that, that people wanted him to get. It's not the kind of justice he deserved. These people will live wealthy, ripe old ages and nothing will ever happen to them. They'll be billionaires the rest of their lives. It doesn't matter what they did before this. Uh, they'll be billionaires for the rest of they'll never have to worry about money or anything for the rest of their lives and they never did anything except crime mm. I have seen some videos with uh, Bill Clinton where he was like under mind control he looked like zombie uh, I don't know if you have seen these pictures so uh, these videos but obviously he has been under MK Ultra. You know, <clears throat> even somebody as skilled as Bill Clinton in, in front of people, and he was, he was skilled. He was born with a gift to, to stand up and to persuade people. You can't be on all the time. I have seen, uh, you know, George Bush look like he was in a dream state, couldn't, couldn't complete a sentence, couldn't even look at the camera. I've also seen Bill Clinton like that. I've seen Barack Obama and you kind of wonder, is he stoned? Is, is he on drugs right now? Because he's, he's not even coherent on camera. They all get that way. And it may be this kind of uh, very intense uh, uh, mind control, drug control. I personally knew for quite some time the pilot of the 747 not Air Force One, but the press corps plane. This is the plane that goes with the president. So all the reporters are there and they can ask the dignitaries questions and they can interview him and all that. He flew that plane. And he was a 747 pilot, very seasoned, very uh, a good man of integrity. And he told me directly that he has seen President Jimmy Carter before taking a long trip on an airplane, they would give him an injection to put him to sleep. And then when they would get to their destination, they would give him another injection to wake him up. This is the way his lifestyle went. You don't think that of Jimmy Carter. And that was way back in the 70s. This was going on. So it's been going on a long, long time. Yeah, and I would mention George Green, uh, the elite whistleblower. He sat on meetings with people like uh, uh, Henry Kissinger. They were planning to nuke people and to kill billions of people. But he said that two years before Jimmy Carter was elected, so-called elected as president of the United States, that he, they told him that he will be elected. Uh, it was, uh, those, were, those were strange times too. Nixon uh, lost his support. Uh, in the Congress and the Senate, they basically, uh, his team did the same thing that, that Obama's team did, only uh, in the old days they didn't have computers, so they had to do it the old fashioned way. They broke into their office <laughs> and went through the files and they got caught. I interviewed G. Gordon Liddy, I met him in person. That's one of the guys that went to jail for doing that break in. And uh, I could tell you it was very strange times in Washington. So when, when Gerald Ford came in uh, to the presidency, because he was Speaker of the House, excuse me, 
uh, another individual whose name was Spiro Agnew, not related to me, I promise. Uh, he had to resign the, the vice presidency because of campaign finance uh, irregularities. He used some real estate money to finance his campaign and the, they didn't want him to be president because he was a very conservative guy. Uh, they made him resign. So that made Speaker of the House Gerald Ford president. And Gerald Ford was a very intelligent man. He had a PhD, he was a football star. He, he had a gift and his gift was he could remember people's names. He could meet you and shake your hand and not see you again for a year. But if you came up to him again and say, Mr. President, I don't know if you, oh, sure, I remember you, Brooks. He would remember your name. That, that was his gift. And that's why he was Speaker of the House. That's one of the gifts he used. The press, because he was a Republican, the, <coughs> the press made him out to be a bungling, clumsy idiot. And he was anything but that. Anything but that. So when it came time for him to actually run for president, they just put Jimmy Carter up against him and there was no contest. The, the press had already ruined him in the two and a half years that he was in the presidency. And, and Jimmy Carter graduated the war college, you know, peanut farmer. He was an uh, expert politician in Georgia. He had no problem winning. And he was disastrous, absolutely disastrous for the country. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the way history goes. That's, and, and, and I believe that they do pick people and then groom them and then and tell them, even years in advance, you're the next president. So don't do anything stupid. Don't get anybody pregnant. You know, don't, don't have any strange pictures taken of you uh, in strange places. You're going to be the president in three years. So, yes, they definitely make plans like that. Yeah. And the, the style that you have written this book is, uh, it's like Tom Clancy, like Tom Clancy's uh, book. I have great, great respect for Tom Clancy. And I, I am one of those, not a conspiracy nut, but I, I'm one of those people that think that, you know, Tom was in pretty good health and uh, he was actively writing. He had a, surely a successful lifestyle, no stress bothering him whatsoever. And all of a sudden he just dies unexpectedly and no autopsy, no nothing. The family just, just devastated. Um, so there's that. But Clancy wrote about government conspiracies and um, military uh, te technologies that maybe the common person didn't know about. And um, I liked his style of, of dealing with espionage. So uh, this book is like that style, except that I use my personal characters, characters that I invented, to go into real history. I don't make up history. Go into real history and put you on the ground floor at, at about a dozen major events in this book so that you can see the reader sees these events put in order. And once you see these things put in order, you cannot deny that it's all planned because the, the timing and the... <coughs> <clears throat> the promotion, the escalation of each person and each event is so perfect and so organized, so well-funded, so well-promoted, you know that it's planned. Mm -hmm. It's great. I would just mention that uh, I have learned Illuminati coded language that they use in uh, mainstream media, and it's all over the world, especially in Western countries and here in the uh, European Union countries. It's the same. Uh, I believe it was invented or um, in California, maybe the mm. California Institute of Art. But it's the same language. So even if I wouldn't understand a language, I can still understand the coded language of the Illuminati. And I want to mention that the Illuminati have shown clearly, I could see it too, that Tom Clancy was assassinated. And I know the person who I would charge with the crime. It's the head of Illuminati himself. I would charge if I were wow. 
if yeah. I if I was uh, a member of Tom Clancy's uh, relatives, I would say the head of Illuminati, William Van Damme, is the most responsible. And also, uh, they killed him. He was, um, uh, I believe, it was first of October two thousand thirteen, and it was a huge false flag nuclear force flag plant in uh, California, in the Long Beach military base, which was prevented. Uh, Alex Jones uh, had some information already in uh, around 6 September 2013. They were planning a nuclear force flag. And it was 1st of October 2013 that they would hit um, uh, Long Beach military base and they would accuse Russians because the hydrogen bomb was, uh, I believe it was hydrogen bomb, it was uh, Soviet, old Soviet bomb. And Alex Jones had on his show on 6th of September um, a nuke was, a nuclear weapon was taken from Dias military base in northern uh, Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, and they transported to, I believe, South, South Carolina, where there is a company, they remake nuclear, nuclear weapons. And then on, this, on 6th of September 2013, so-called uh, rocket, um, unmanned rocket LADI was launched to, to take pictures of the moon. It was a fakery. Then mm -hmm. we... They, NASA hasn't shown us any picture from the, the moon taken by the LADI rocket because it was a nuclear weapon inside of it and it wasn't uh, activated, of course. Uh, the 27th of September 2013, it was revealed, so they couldn't, uh, they couldn't activate, activate it. But it was 1st of October 2013 that would this, hydrogen bomb, I believe, would hit or would be spread like uh, above people in California and so, and uh, it would take your, it would be like EMP mm -hmm. also. And uh, because of that, I remember Tom Clancy was murdered, I believe, uh, 1st of October 2000. And 13. Sorry, I'm speaking too much now. But uh, <laughs> Um, well, I mean, all, you know, all of this, and you mentioned the Illuminati code. You and I were talking about this off camera. It, it, one of the things that anybody will observe if they study this subject for very long is this very strange practice that uh, the people that are at war with America, I call them the globalist elites. I call them the global syndicate. I call them the Clinton crime syndicate. They're at war with America. And it's so interesting that today on the news, today I watch the news in the morning and in the evening, both uh, dignitaries or both officers that were testifying in Washington before the Senate said exactly that. We are at war. We are at war. And I say that in this book. I say that on my Twitter account. I say that on my uh, radio program. People don't realize it, but we are at war. And there have very recently been some massive assassination attempts against our Congress. Uh, many people saw the trash truck hit the train and they thought, oh, that's, look at there, there's a train accident. But, of course, everybody's fine, and so they just don't say anything about it in the news. But when you look at the conditions under which that took place, that particular trip by train with those people was planned a year ago. It was probably the most well-known trip that was going to be taken by all the Republicans on one train at one time. With some of them had their wives and some had their kids with them. <coughs> A total of about 300 people. Oh. Now, the train has to cross several roads to get from uh, where it was to Greenbrier. 
uh, which is a, a, a resort, uh, but it's also a command and control bunker that was built in the 1950s. Now it's been refurbished with tens of millions of dollars and it's in pristine condition now. So you have to ask yourself the question, why would 230 plus Republican congressmen and their wives and their kids go into a nuclear blast proof bunker for three days to meet with the president? There's only two reasons. One is they kind of had to get used to the place because they might be doing command and control from that place. The second is there have been so many leaks and so many spies in Washington. There, they had to go someplace safe where they could not be bugged, where they could not be spied upon. And so they went there for three days and nobody knows what they talked about in this place. But before that, before that, they're crossing all these roads, all the crossing arms are down, there's a helicopter over the train, police have blocked off the roads ahead of the train, but somehow a trash truck with three men in it, that's very strange to see anyway, three men in it go around the police roadblock, around the crossing arm, and smash into the train. They hit it so hard, that the train was going 70 miles an hour. It carried this truck from one road all the way down to the next road. That's how long it took the train to stop. When it came to a stop, two of the wheels of the train were off the tracks. One more wheel, one more wheel, and we would still be burying congressmen today. That's how close that assassination attempt came. And we would have had a constitutional crisis like you cannot believe because the only congressmen left would be Democrats. All the Republicans would either be dead or in the hospital. It's shocking. That's how close we came. That's not a false flag. That's a real flag right there. Yeah. So this book is built like that, except that the event that I describe in it actually happens. It doesn't happen as bad as what they think it's going to be, but they, it, they pull it off. The reason that they do it is because for the last year, we have watched all these bad players, <coughs> excuse me, all these players that thought they got away with it. We've seen them now exposed. Their dossiers are exposed. Their money is exposed. The shenanigans that they pulled, the crimes that they did, all exposed. It's sort of like when you've, you've been hunting a pack of wild dogs and you finally catch up with them and you begin to get closer and closer and you back them into a corner. That's when those dogs are the most dangerous. And that's where we are right now, this minute. We are in that most dangerous spot. Yeah, I feel exactly as you feel. And I would like to ask you also on um, Kerry Cassidy. Kerry Cassidy interviewed you on uh, Project Camelot, and I recommend the interview because it was great. But you were talk, you talk about uh, Hawaii, that the Clintons were there, and even Chelsea Clinton. When uh, uh, could you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's world news that uh, a Hawaiian uh, technician received a message that a missile was on its way. And so he is, uh, doesn't get the last part of the message that this is only a drill because somebody in the building picked up the phone and broke the connection just at the time when this message was coming through. Oh, you could say, gee, that's a really a Homer Simpson, you know, kind of mistake. But when you consider that Bill and Hillary were on the island at that time and that it was NBC that was in the building when that phone got picked up and NBC, I mean, Chelsea Clinton works for NBC. She makes $600,000 a year from NBC. And well, I still don't know what she does there. I don't think really anybody does. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, there's this, there's this terrible flu going around uh, the U.S. And everybody is about the same place I am. We're over it, 
but we have this this cough that just lingers. I watched Newt Gingrich today. He's coughing. Hannity, coughing. Everybody has this cough. So my prayers go out to everybody. Let's get over this and, and move on, please. So anyway, that was, uh, you know, it's one coincidence after another. And you have to wonder, you know, if if we were very lucky. Not that there wasn't a missile headed for Hawaii, because maybe there was, maybe there wasn't, but it was just a drill, right? What if, what if we would have shot back during that amount of time? During that eight, 28 minutes that no one had the, the all clear, what if somebody shot back? It'd be a war. We'd be at war, just like that. Fortunately, nobody lost their head. Yeah, it was. And then you had uh, um, also information about the Haiti um, problem that the Clinton. Uh, Haiti was uh, a catastrophe. I mean, when an earthquake hits that powerful, and it hits in an area that does not have high building standards, you have a lot of injuries. And there were a lot of countries that responded. They brought in portable hospitals. They brought in doctors. They, they brought in water. But the first people on the ground there were the Clintons. And, of course, I mean, there, this goes, it, it's, it's huge. You cannot believe. All the cell phone communications, because Haiti doesn't have, you know, telephone lines like we have telephone lines. Everything is done by cell phone. The Clintons took over all of the cell phone communications. They brought in their own cell phone company. Then they went on national news and said, look, we really need you know, things here. We need money. Uh, don't send stuff. Just send cash. It's $10, $20, whatever you can send, send it to. And they gave out their web address and the money just poured in. But the Clintons did not use any of that money for Haiti. They used it to build up the Clinton Foundation. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. But none of it went to Haiti. None of it went to build houses or clear rubble or build hospitals or take care of people that were displaced or injured or needed long-term care. None of it. It all went to enrich the Clintons. And so... A few of the Haitians, you know, started to complain about this. Well, nobody really paid any attention to them because the press didn't want to hear it. But several of the doctors who were there on the ground waiting for that money, watching what was going on, they're smart. They're educated. They know what's going on. They were going to come to the States and testify. Here's what was done with the money. They're all dead, all of them. Mm -hmm. It was a couple in uh, Toronto, uh, a that And there was another gentleman uh, last year who was going to testify the next day. And he was working out at the hotel and dropped a dumbbell on his own neck and killed himself. Hmm. You believe that? I don't believe that for a minute. Yeah. And there was I another doctor that stabbed himself in the chest at home. Stabbed him his own self in the chest. I'm not believing that either. Yeah, and uh, people in the United States pay for um, Secret Service and uh, like Homeland Security and uh, all this stuff. And then the head of Illuminati mostly lives in your country. He's from Belgium originally, but he lives mostly in your country. And uh, he has uh, bragged for to Fritz Springmeier that he has an assassination death squad. He, he uh, bragged to him and he wrote to him or told him that uh, there will be dead bankers in the future and all, or they, they got killed then later. So, well, so, uh, There's a lot of that in this book. I mean, it's 423 pages. So yeah, wow. most of the bad guys, as we were talking about this Illuminati code, they seem to have to, they have a rule that they have to 
sort of announce what they're going to do before they do it. They don't, I mean, sometimes they just come right out and say it. <laughs> Other times they're like you say, they lay it in as code and, and, and they do this because, and this is where the name, the name charm of favor comes from because it's kind of like a witchcraft, like a spell, a charm of favor that they have certain rules, supernatural rules that they have to obey or else they can't get the supernatural help. You know what I'm saying? Once you, it's sort of like, a, this is going to sound funny, but it's kind of like a vampire. Allegedly, he comes to your window and he can knock, you know, but you have to invite him in. He can't just, he's powerful enough. He could just burst the glass and come in and, and, and suck your blood. But you have to invite him in because there's rules to this. It's, it's, I know it's victims that can be taken without these rules being applied to our children. And we see them victimized unbelievably by this crime syndicate, slavery, trafficking, abuse, murders. Uh, I mean, the, the, the wealthy aristocrats have been doing this for thousands of years, thousands of years, and they're still doing it. They just don't do it in public like they used to. Yeah, but they, uh, right now, but they wish to come out with this openly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they want to do it openly. They want a society where they can be who they want to be, what they want to be without anybody stopping them. And this is really the war that we are at. You know, we're at we're at war with this kind of mentality. When uh, just yesterday, or maybe it was today, Vice President Pence was attacked because he's a Christian and because he claims that he gets guidance from Jesus. Well, they just said, that's insane. You, you know, you can't, but I can promise you that if he said, well, I'm a Muslim and I get guidance from Allah, well, they would have praised his diversity and they would have given him all kinds of awards and he would have been on every talk show in the country. But let him be a Christian and watch what happens. Yeah. That's the war we have going on right now, Yitka. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, the sound is getting worse now, and it's very late where you are. I know where you are, but I don't know if you want to say it because because nobody of, knows where I am. Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, but would it be possible to do another uh, another interview? Because I would like to talk with you also about the Hollow Earth. Uh, sure. And it's. Uh, Oh, free energy, you are knowledgeable in that and uh, many other things. So it would be great if we could do another time. I'd be happy to, no problem. Yeah, and just uh, before we, be, uh, before you leave, uh, uh, I would like to ask you where people can get the book and your talk show where it's Sundays, isn't it? If you could say something about it. Sure. Uh, the book, you can buy at Amazon, US, UK, uh, same with Barnes and Noble. You can get it in Nook. You can get it in Kindle. If you buy any of those forms of the book, there is an email address inside the book. You write to me and tell me that you bought the book and I will send you a link to the audio version of the book for free. So it won't be finished till the end of this month, but if you're not a good reader, don't worry about it. I read it for you. Uh, each Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern U.S. time on X Squared Radio, I have a three-hour talk program where we talk about the mysteries of the universe and of the earth. Uh, we talk about these subjects and many more. And you can call in or you can write me in the chat room and we can interact that way and I'd be happy to have you. Yeah, and do you have some uh, homepage or? Uh... Yeah, the homepage is just xsquaredradio.com. Uh, all the links to the books, the store, all the any events, or if you want me to come speak at your event, everything is there at that website. X squared radio, like you know, X squared the math formula. Yeah, it's X two or 
X squared. Either way, either way, you can put it in Google either way and it will come up. Yeah, or they can Google your name so they will find you anyway, somehow. <laughs> yeah, I just don't like to say Google my name. It sounds funny. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, thank, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I hope we will see each other very soon. For oh, we will. You. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.